Do you ever wonder how great leaders in the community make things happen? When they encounter new unexpected challenges like a pandemic, how do they continue to successfully make an impact? Welcome to That Sounds Terrific, the podcast that connects you with these amazing people. Get insights on what they do to meet their goals. Find out how you can help them in their mission and learn their methods so you can be more successful at what you do. Welcome to That Sounds Terrific with host Nick Koziel. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of That Sounds Terrific. Uh, joining me today is Kathy Lanzalaco, and I am so excited to have you on the show because not only not only have you helped me in the past, but you helped so many other people. And um, why don't you just give a quick intro uh, about yourself and tell us what you do? Yeah. Hey, thanks, Nick. Um, I am Kathy Lanzalaco, and I am the owner of Inspire Careers, located here in the beautiful Western New York area. And my job is is a career coach. And I help people transition in their careers, advance in their careers. And there's so much of that going on today. And I absolutely love what I do, helping people find their dream jobs. And within that, I help them create fabulous career marketing tools like resumes, LinkedIn profiles, biographies, you know, whatever it takes to help them get their message across to the people that they want to impart their value to. Yeah, and you use a lot of different mediums uh, to get that message across. And, and that's one of the things that I just love about you. Um, you've got a podcast, you've got video spotlights, and you're just using all the tools at your disposal to help others. Um, yes, it is a business. Uh, but what I do love is that you do take the time to kind of come into my support group um, and talk to individuals and help them with their careers because you just genuinely like to help people, which is why I wanted to have you on the show. Um, so can you talk a little bit about like, you know, how you started in, in your career and, and what you got, got you motivated to where you are today? Yeah, you know, I, I do believe that my story is interesting and it's inspirational because it's, it rings true to so many people. My first career, I was a registered nurse and I worked at Sisters Hospital here in Buffalo for many, many years. And I love nursing. I had no intention of getting out of it on purpose, but one thing led to another. Opportunities opened up and I was um, offered a job in human resources. And I took that job and went back to school, got an MBA, got certifications for HR, learned that, but do a lot on my nursing to make that transition. And then I built a career in HR leadership. And I ran an HR department in a warehouse out in Lancaster for many, many years. Best job ever, worked for the best people ever, worked with the best people ever, loved my job, would have stayed there forever um, if I was allowed to. But unfortunately, about five years ago, the business closed. You know, and again, a story that resonates with so many people. And I was devastated. I lost my, what I call my big fat HR job. <laughs> and I had to start all over again. And I took a few short-term HR jobs in between, but I knew I really didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and I had already changed careers once. And I, I, I knew in my heart that I really wanted to help people transition into the careers. And as I was making the transition and helping 600 people from our warehouse do the same thing, I said, yeah, this is what I need to do next. Mm -hmm. And so I started subcontracting for the original owner of Inspire Careers. And I opened my own business, which at the time was called Write Resume for the Job. Learned my craft, got certifications, won a national award for my resume writing, like threw my whole self into it. And then my, um, then the owner, the original owner of Inspire Curves passed away. And when she did, I bought her business and I rolled my other business up into that one. And the job that I had had in HR at the time, I quit and I said, I'm going to do this full time. And I took a leap of faith. I didn't have a second income. And I, you know, the, one part of that story that I, I think is interesting for people that are thinking about stepping out on their own. Um, actually, I worked at Niagara University and um, it was a great job at the time in the HR department. And that's the job I left. My daughter was an incoming freshman and I would have gotten four years of free tuition. Yeah. I walked away from it because I really wanted to open my business that badly. So, you know, for anybody out there hearing that too, sometimes you just got to take a chance. Right, right. And we've talked about that at length, you know, offline and in different groups about how you need to follow what makes you happy. Because mm -hmm. um, no one wants to be in a job where they're miserable. And, um, you know, if you can do what you love, uh, it makes 
work, not work, right? Um, so can you talk a little bit about, you know, that transition and, and really what, what you went through to kind of identify that that was the right leap of faith for you? Yeah, well, you know, so much of it is really getting in touch with your heart and listening to the voices inside. And I mean, in a good way, not the other voices that talk to us, because there's those two, there really yeah. are. Um, but it really is trusting your instincts and saying, yeah, I'm scared, but I think I can do this. I, I think I can do this. And I've always believed too, that if it's in your heart, you're capable of doing it. Like there's things that would never come to my consciousness and my heart, because I know I can't do them. I can never be a rock star. I have no desire to be. But, you know, when I had the idea to run my business, I'm like, I never thought about it, but why couldn't I do it, yeah. right? And it's a lot. It is a lot of learning, failing. <laughs> um, I've shared, you know, frequently too about uh, trying to keep myself as a priority, keep my health centered while I was growing my business. It grew so quickly that I really kind of lost myself in it. And I had to recenter myself for that too. So um, I say, start with what you thought you've always wanted to do and listen to yourself, but you have to have some quiet time too, to really hear what, yeah. what your heart is saying to you. And if we're so busy all the time, running around, doing things, doing things for others, which is a, a wonderful thing to do, but you have to have time to sit and quiet and reflect to really tap into what you think you want to do. Yeah. I mean, we often, you know, if when you lose a position um, and, and you've been through that and um, many of us have, we often just struggle so fast. Like we got to get right on top of getting that next job. Right. Uh, and there's outside factors that, that obviously, you know, you need money, you need income to, you know, you might be uh, supporting your family, you're supporting yourself. But if we don't take that time to kind of reflect, um, on uh, maybe first of all, why why we lost that position? It may have been no at no fault of your own. It may have there have may have been some factors in there. But if we don't take that time to reflect. Um, we're going to get ourselves back into a similar situation or maybe a worse situation. Um, so I, I like that you highlight those things in addition to the practical skills that people need to, to develop. Um, so can you talk a little bit maybe about how, when you get a client for the first time or a potential client, how you, how do you make your approach and, and what's some advice you kind of give them right off the bat? Yeah. You know, there's a couple of groups of, of people that come to me and when I, I don't mean where they work, but I mean, kind of what their mentality is. Most of the people that come to me are passive job seekers, meaning they have mm -hmm. jobs and they say, I just want to explore. I want to see, you know, maybe I'm happy here. Maybe I'm not, but I think I can maybe do better. I think I want something different. So there's a lot of those people who are just kind of dabbling and just willing to take a little bit of chance behind the scenes and see what they get. But then there are other people that come to me that don't have jobs for whatever reason, or the people that come to me and say, I am done with this. I want something completely different. I'm tired of working in healthcare. I'm tired of doing retail or whatever it is. And then they say, oh, no, I want something completely different. And so my question to all three of these groups is, well, what do you think you want to do? Mm -hmm. And invariably, they say to me, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I go, I think you do. I think you do. I just don't think you want to tell me. And what I mean by that is not tell me, but I don't know that you've admitted it to yourself. And what I, what I mean when I say that is that, again, it's back to that calling of the heart, if you will, that I think people know, but they don't want to say it because they don't know how they can have it, or they're not sure how they're going to get there. Or they say, well, gee, I work in healthcare. There's no way I could possibly run a resort in the Caribbean, you know, if yeah. that's what I really wanted to do. So it's impossible. So I, I can't say that. And they're embarrassed to say what they really want. But the truth is, you can have anything you want. You just have to figure out a way to get there. Right. And look, that doesn't mean that, you know, everybody can be president. We're not all going to be president. You're probably not going to be an MBA star if you're four foot six. Yeah. Those aren't the kind of things I'm talking about. But I'm talking about that if you are willing to be honest with yourself, you're willing to put in the discovery work to do it. The sky's the limit. You can have whatever you want. But I think deep down, people know where their talents mm -hmm. lie and they're just hesitant sometimes to embrace them. Yeah. And, and it, you help get people out of that fog or that haze. And there's been, you know, a bunch of different things, just even simple paper forms that you've shared that kind of help people reorganize their thought process and kind of get to that conclusion on their own. Um, you know, we both were in, in forms of higher ed. Um, in our past. And one of the things that I really enjoyed when I worked with interns and, and developing students was 
not telling them what to do or even telling them how to do it, but having them uh, develop that sense of path and, and how to figure it out on their own. Because they're not going to always have someone to, to hold their hand. Um, and I think that's just very uh, important work that you do. You, you give them tools to sort of self-discover. And that's why I call it guided discovery. Right. Because if I tell you what to do, then that's exactly what's happening. I'm telling you what to do. That's not why people come to me. They come to me for me to help them realize what they want to do and guiding them through it. And I'm a big proponent of tools. I absolutely am, which is why I've shared them in the group. Um, I believe you get better results when you write things down, everything from goals to, um, to just journaling and trying to work out your emotions. There's so much power in writing things out um, versus just thinking them on the fly. So I, I tap into all of that. You're right. Yeah, it's, it's all great things to do. And, and to shift gears just a little bit, because um, we mentioned, you know, you were in healthcare and I know COVID hit and everyone did a little pivoting. Was there ever a time where you thought maybe you'd go back to, to nursing during, during COVID? Actually, I got in the early days of COVID, I got a, an email from the state of New York because I'm still registered. I still have an active nurse's license. And I wanted to know, did I want to come back? Did I want to work in a hospital or did I want to give vaccinations? Um, and at the time, I, I, I wasn't interested in that. Now, if it got to the point with all these new variants that mm -hmm. there was, you know, major call to arms where anybody that could, you know, that could give a shot or could have any skills at all, yeah, I, I probably would do that. But the reality is I have been out of the game a long, long time. Right. And my skills are not what the, the skills uh, that nurses and other healthcare professionals have today. But could I, if you taught me again, you know, could I pick it up? Sure, you could. Um, but the, the thing with, you know, transitioning, whether it's from healthcare to HR or whatever, anything else anybody wants to do, you always take that first bit and you mm -hmm. use that, what you, the transferable skills from that to go into something else. And then you keep moving the dial forward on it. And nursing, while, you know, everybody kind of thinks of a bedside nursing, there's so much more that goes into it, right? Mm -hmm. Attention to detail and relationship building and skills of assessment that you can transfer to other jobs. Right. Just have to think about it. Yeah, and, and you talk about transferable skills, and I know that's been a sort of a hot button issue um, in some of the career support groups that I have in, I'm in about um, employers not necessarily being able to to take or see the, the transferable skills. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and how to maybe make your transferable skills shine in new industries? Yeah, you know, this is what I say all the time, too, and I say this as an HR professional and a career professional, so it is no slight at all to anybody. But I say people have to take responsibility for themselves and they have to take people on their journey. You cannot expect an HR person to look at your resume and read into it and figure out what you want and put the pieces together. And a lot of times people don't have those creative skills to be able to, to do it or importantly, the time and it's not their responsibility to do that, mm -hmm. right? So you really have to own your, your greatness. You have to own your talents and you have to do the work ahead of time to be able to communicate it. I just did a blog article a couple of weeks ago that I said the three C's of a successful job search. And the first one was clarity. I always come back to clarity. And when you look at your transferable skills, that helps you build clarity in what you want to do and what you're capable of doing. And you match that up with what your heart is telling you to do, where have you had successes in the past, and that all comes together to be able to help you determine that direction. But if you don't know what you want, how can you expect anybody else to, right. to know for you? Yeah. So doing that pre-work to really establish that clarity and stop hiding behind the I don't knows and stop hiding the maybes or I don't thanks, right? If you can't own it, who's going to pay you for it? Yeah, you're, you're totally right. And, you know, we, we it kind of goes into that ne the next set of questions that I have, you know, once you've got that clarity, you also are developing your personal brand, which I know you're a huge, huge component uh -huh. of, um, uh -huh. you know, and so you got that down, right? You know what you want, you know who you're, you are, who you want to be, and, and how do you uh, prepare your clients or, you know, your contacts to, to do that, to shine and, and show their brand? Yeah. And, you know, the thing with personal branding is I, I think people get overwhelmed with it and say, oh, I'm not a brand. I, you know, and they don't 
understand what it really is, is about separating yourself out from others. What makes you, you? Why should I, if I'm a, an employer, why should I hire you over the 12 other people, 20 other people, 100 other people that, you know, that apply for this job? On paper, you're probably all qualified. But help me understand why it's you. And so that's what personal branding work is about. How do I show up in the workplace? Why do people enjoy working with me? How do I solve problems? What can you expect when Kathy walks in a room, when Nick walks in a room, right? right? And, and there's that old saying about personal branding is what people say about you when you're not in the room, mm -hmm. right? And you hope that it's what you want to be hearing, that what you hope people are saying about you, right? So it's when I work with clients now, when I have new clients come to me, I do a disc assessment with them. And I don't know if anybody knows what that is. A lot of HR professionals will, right? It's really a communication behavioral styles assessment. I also am certified to do a lot of different assessments. And depending on the client, I may do others. But the disc assessment is a great tool because it supports the conversation that we have, the work that the client and I are doing together with a reliable and validated tool. So it's an objective voice, if you will, that is able to help support what they say. So you need to go into an interview and you can say anything about yourself, right? But if you have an, a well-respected tool that says these things about you as well, that puts you in a really powerful position. Mm -hmm. So it's not just what Nick thinks about himself or what Kathy thinks about herself, yeah, look, this is what I have. And this is absolutely what you're going to find from me every day that I get here. This is who I am and how I show up. Yeah. And, you know, in that self-discovery, you know, you know who you are, you're starting to brand yourself. It's important that you show your potential employers who you are. So that's why I like your spotlight videos on, on some of, uh, of your clients and even just your personal videos and, and, and your outreach. You're showing people, your network, who Kathy is. Uh -huh. You know, uh, that's why I developed it, you know, developed it, the great word, developed this podcast is because I wanted to get out there and talk to people like you uh, that were making a positive impact in the, in the world, because I gave you a very general statement when we first spoke, and that was, I just want to help people. And you're like, what does that mean? And so what I did was develop a podcast, develop a network where I am just trying to help as many people as I can you know, find that dream, whether it's a career or whether it's just a passion. Um, and, and a lot of what we both share in group is, you know, finding ways to put your passions into the workforce and workplace and sharing those things. So if you like photography, um, you know, putting up a, a photo blog, um, you know, if you like um, skiing, you know, you can talk about, you know, what it means to ski and what do you need to do um, to prepare for a trip and things like that. It all shows different skills and there are different ways to kind of show those skills on your professional network. And again, that's what I like about what you do. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you maybe have people's passions show up in the network, in the workspace, professional space? Yeah. You know, the, the key today, Nick, we're talking about personal branding, but within that is, is really the overused word of authenticity. Mm -hmm. It's really about letting people know who you are. And I have to be honest, I have struggled with it. I have struggled with it tremendously. By nature, I'm kind of a closed person. And part of why I started doing the videos too was to start being able to release, um, to release myself because I was holding myself back. I knew that in many ways. And I knew I had a lot to share. And over time, I have learned to be more authentic. And what that means is letting people have some insight kind of behind the scenes a little bit, a little bit about my struggles, a little bit about every day is imperfect, telling a little bit more about myself that, um, that not because it's important about me, but people resonate with it. And that's what authenticity is about. So when you mention if somebody has a passion for photography, well, maybe your job isn't going to be in photography, but what a great conversation starter and what a great way for people to get to know you. And you never know where that photography might land you or what it might do for you but if you hide it um like the old scriptures about hiding your light under a barrel whatever that is right um and if you do that nobody's ever going to know and everything doesn't have to be perfect and everything doesn't have to make sense but if you give people start getting people those insights they'll be able to connect with you on a level that they may not have before and really today what we've learned from covid too is that we are 360 people, right? Our lives are complex. And so 
to be setting all these things in little silos. It isn't how people digest information anymore. It's not what people want. People want to know the real story and not to celebrate somebody's failures, but to be able to say, oh my gosh, that sounds like me. Yes, I can do that too. Yes, yes. Yeah. You know, and as part of that, I've been sharing openly and I've, I've made it a point. Um, I've just lost 80 pounds. Mm-hmm. That's great. And that's been a, it's been a nine month journey for me. And I have a few pounds to lose. I would never have said that last year. Mm -hmm. Last year, I would have been tied up in the embarrassment of having put weight on while I was growing my business. I was so stressed. Mm -hmm. I put it all on in that period of time. Now I say, who else has suffered with that over COVID or with the stress of building a business? Wow. And I, I am blown away by the people that that has resonated with the messages I have got. And what I'm going to start doing actually is start posting pictures of the food that I've been eating and some tips because really wellness, I don't care if you're self-employed, I don't care if you're working for someone else, I don't care if you're retired, wellness guides everything that we do. Wellness starts in the head. So, and that's what I always say about job search, job search success starts in the head. So you can find that compliment, photography, business, whatever it is, go for it. Yeah, I know in general, um, in the United States in particular, we, we don't very much um, concentrate on ourselves uh-huh. as far as wellness goes. You know, it, you know I, I think of Europe where, you know, doctors will give uh, vacations as a prescription, you know. Um, <laughs> I need that doctor. Yeah, right? Give me and, that doctor. And that's just not part of our culture. But, yeah. you know, when you think about it and you look at um, some of the statistics around um, getting yourself, you know, and your mind, body, and soul centered, you, you become a more productive worker. You become a, a much bigger asset to any company that you might work for. And you know, going back to what we were just chatting about, uh, one of the the things that I really enjoy about seeing someone express themselves in the network professionally and show these interests like photography, we keep going and going back to that, is we don't always know um, who our network is also in contact with and what other jobs might be out there um, that aren't posted. So you might find a job um, that has a correlation to photography um, that you didn't even know existed um, it's kind of how I fell into the Alzheimer's Association. I, I wasn't really looking for that position, but there was a whole bunch of connections that I had along the way, and they saw what I was doing and thought I might be a good fit. Um, so I think that that's really important about, you know, you find yourself, you, you show um, your, your network who you are, and you'll start to get opportunities out of that. Because um, who wants to go to a, a job, again, that the culture isn't what you want to? Mm-hmm. So... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, well, didn't our parents used to do that? I mean, I know, you know, my father was miserable in his job every day for 40 years, but they accepted that, you know, they just accepted that being unhappy in your job was part of being a grown up, right? <laughs> now, is every day flowers and unicorns? No, it's not. That's part of being a grown up, but you don't have to be unhappy in your work. And I tell people, think about what work really is. Take a step back. Because work has such a a bad connotation. Mm -hmm. Work is truly an exchange of energy for uh, our giving back to work, to the world, to society, for our living here. So what it really is, is it's giving back, it's supporting the world. So whether you are in public service, whether you are in maintenance, whether you are in an office job, think about how your job ultimately serves mankind. This is what jobs are. Mm-hmm. So first, I think, you know, being able to put yourself in the headspace to say, my work is important, even if it doesn't feel like it on a daily basis, it serves a greater good. Right. And then to always take that a step further and say, okay, but what would make me feel even better? Because yeah. there is those, there are those jobs out there. And to your point, they're sometimes they're not readily available. You don't know what they are. And of course, we could have a whole conversation about the hidden job market right? Jobs that aren't posted. But what I think you're really talking about is kind of creating your own opportunities where people see your value in different spaces and say, hey, what about this? I think you'd be great at that. Isn't that a beautiful thing to do? And there's no reason that you have to be unhappy in a job anymore, Mm -hmm. right? There's so many things available to do and to see and to be. It's everything. The world's open for everybody. Yeah, you struck a chord because I was thinking about a story I heard about a gentleman who had a job that he hated, right? But the job allowed him to do the things that he was passionate about because of the work structure. And, you know, he had basically a nine to five job and then, you know, but he was starting at four in the morning and he was done 
you know, two or three o'clock. So he's able to have the rest of his day to be with his family. When his kids came home, he got to work on the passion projects. And sometimes, you know, if we go back to those lists, like one of the lists that you've handed out is, you know, you, you kind of weigh the positives and the negatives about each situation. Um, and I think that's just a great, very simple tool. But um, in a lot of what we, you know, you do and I and I've done in the past with with clients is is help them with a very simple tool that you know they could have done on their own, but it's just you need to kind of handhold them a little bit, you know, to get them down the right path. Uh-huh. Um, so, can you talk a little bit more about your transition in uh, into video, um, you know, and your you know you, the kind of turn that you made. Um, when COVID came in and, and, and how you've had to kind of combat that and where you are now? Yeah, you know, just like so many people, I was hesitant about video. I didn't really appreciate uh, the power of video initially. Um, and then when COVID hit, a friend of mine, um, Rob Simonelli, who is a, a life coach here in the Buffalo area and who has been my coach in the past, mm-hmm. we decided to start a podcast called Coaches Unite. And we still do it. Here we are almost two years later and we are still doing it on a weekly basis. But we did that in response to COVID. That forced us to be comfortable with video. Neither of us had done it before. Mm-hmm. And we just wanted to share information and help people during the time. And so we created a private Facebook group and we started doing it. And we got so much response from people that just felt supported. And then the more we did it, the more we realized that, wow, this is really powerful. And so he started going off and doing a lot of videos to, um, to promote his business, getting really comfortable with that. And that was hugely successful because then people could get great insight into him and his style and his warmth. And it worked out remarkably well for him. And for me, I wanted to share more information about the job search process and certainly being able to make myself more comfortable with it. But I I would tell people, if you're not sure, throw yourself into it. And my video podcast series has grown to three video podcast series that have now been converted to audio podcasts as well, everywhere people get podcasts. But they're just things that I created and that I invited people into. Look, it's not making me rich. Nobody from NBC's calling me to say, can I be on your show? It's not, that's not what it was for. It was meant to be a showcase to help people learn information, get information, important content in a really personal manner. And now then it branched off into, you know, my own videos where I'm talking about different pieces of information, different content that I'm sharing. And I continue to do a lot of that just because I, now I enjoy it and I recognize the power of that personality that has to come out in it in that personal connection of video if you're not into video folks hear this message hear the message video is where it's at people want human connection that's right. what video offers yeah you're totally right and, and i think those things are going to come right maybe not cnn but like you know <laughs> you're getting you're getting recognized in our network uh, as a force to be reckoned with especially in regards to career prep and you know, doing the positive work. You don't, you know, and, and again, you don't need to come into to my group and help what you do. And I appreciate that every, every, you know, every week that you do come in and you bring guests. And I think that that's one of the things that, um, you know, our job seekers and the people that we support really need is to expand their networks. And they're not always good at doing it themselves. So um, creating an opportunity for people to meet new people that might introduce them to other people is is what I'm all about and uh, and again I love when you come in because you just bring an extra bigger part of the network right so um what are some things that people um can help you with oh wow that's a great question thank you Nick I appreciate yeah. that um, yes. but let me first say that I appreciate you welcoming me into your group Um, I really come to feel absolutely a part of the group and I get as much energy from the people in there as that I hope I give. And I am grateful if I can be able to add value to them. I love getting to know people on a weekly basis and to be able to really learn more about what's happening with them so that I can structure my thoughts, my communication, my feedback accordingly. Mm -hmm. So you're doing absolutely great work and I'm I'm honored to be part of it. So thank you so much for that. Um, and what's your question, Nick? Because I just talked right over it. <laughs> no, it's okay. Because I kind of transitioned to a totally oh, different <laughs> thing. So yeah, how how can people help you, or or what are some things that you're working on where you know maybe some of our listeners or you know other people in our networks yeah. can help you with? Oh, I have a great ask. Okay, I would love <laughs> to ask. 
Um, I would like, as part of my video series, I have a, a spotlight series um, I call Inspired Career Spotlight and Recruiting. And that has really taken off. I reach out to numerous recruiters and say, look, would you join me on my podcast? I want to interview you about your business. Mm -hmm. And I want to hear about the positions that you're filling. I want us to talk and help job seekers understand the real role of a third-party recruiter, why it's important to develop those relationships, and to develop the relationship with the recruiter, not just the organization, but to expand your network in that regard. And I've been so grateful for the people that have joined me. But my ask is, if there are any recruiters listening to this, and you know, either you haven't had, um, if I've reached out to you in the past and you haven't had time to respond, now's the time, let's do it. Yeah. I'm booking for 2022, because I'm all booked up for 2021 already, I'm done. <laughs> um, but I am booking into mid-January for my next set of um, next set of interviews. So people in the recruiting space, um, people that, and it doesn't have to be from the Western New York area, mm -hmm. doesn't have to be. But, um, and even I, I think this next year, I'm very um, keen with uh, the third party recruiters, meaning pe recruiters that don't work for one particular company, they service many companies. But I would also be very open to speaking with recruiters at a particular organization that's undergoing some fantastic growth that has a wonderful message to share and to help people really be inspired by those things. Or I also have a, a video podcast series called Spotlight on Careers. So if somebody has a wonderful career story to tell, and even if I had nothing to do with it, right, it's not yeah. about my relationship to that success story. Um, I'd love to be able to interview and get your story out there to inspire others. Next week, I think it is, I am releasing um, a Spotlight on Careers video with a young woman named Chelsea Golden. And I'm interviewing Chelsea because well, I've interviewed her. We're just releasing it next week because Chelsea's living the dream that just most people want. Chelsea is a young girl said, I want to go work at Disney World. Awesome. She's working at Disney World. She started her own business. She's got a fabulous boyfriend. She's got it all. <laughs> she's 25 years old. She's from Buffalo. She's just, you know, a small girl just with a big dream. And I just want to share that with people. So yeah, That's my great. ask is if you want to share your success, you want to share your information as a recruiter, come to me. Let's tell your story. No, I love those segments because they not only get out to the to the world, um, you know, the, the business that you're talking about, the recruiter, but also so it eliminates some of the myths. Um, that, you know, job seekers have about what recruiters do and the process, you know, because every company has a different process. And the more that you talk about it and the more people you bring in, um, the more to light you bring some of those, you know, issues yeah. that, that job seekers have. And then vice versa, because I'm sure recruiters have stories about like what to do and what not to do when it comes <laughs> to like, you know, communicating with the first line of, you know, defense, I guess, or offense for a company who's your recruiter, right? You can learn so much from them, so much from them. And then the other benefit to me doing this is that I develop relationships with recruiters, which right. helps my clients, right. right? So that I can say, look, reach out to, like, I have a great relationship with many of them. I'm just going to use Lauren Lewis at Staff Buffalo as an example. Yeah, they great. talk to Lauren, drop my, tell her I sent you, yeah. right? What a great connection, right? And there's no there's no obligation on Lauren's end, but I want to help her in her business. I want to help my client get a job. I want to help put people to work in Buffalo. It's, everybody benefits. It's just a, it's a beautiful situation. No money exchanges hands. Yeah. It's not something about that. It's just, who do you know? How can I help? So I, one of the things that's been on my LinkedIn profile is the human puzzle architect. And, and I, and I strongly feel that you have that title as well because of how many times I've seen you do that where you just connect someone to someone else and you kind of fit the pieces together, right? It doesn't always complete the puzzle. You know, there's other steps to completing that puzzle, but um, it's just, it's it's sort of fun for me. And, and I think you get that too, like where you, you're like, oh, I have a connection uh, to, to that industry or, you know, oh, Disney, right? Now I, I have a connection to Disney, right? Uh -huh. So it's, it's, it's so much fun to see people's eyes like light up when you, when you have a connection to give them, um, and, and it, it sort of pans out to something, you know? Uh -huh. So that's great. So I, I, I highly urge all of my um, listeners or anybody uh, listening to the podcast to reach out to Kathy and I'll have her contact information and all the links to her shows um, in, the, in the podcast notes. Um, what haven't I asked you, Kathy? There, like, there's gotta be something else that uh, I haven't asked that you wanna feature um, that you expected me to ask. What was what, that thing? <laughs> 
Um, I don't know if I expected you to ask, but one thing that um, I do want to kind of put a plug in for is, and you've mentioned it repeatedly, and we do this in the support group every week, is the power of networking. Yeah. You know, that, and I think that's where people struggle a lot. And if you're shy about doing that, again, video is a great place to start because it, it helps you kind of get that face-to-face -face appeal. Um, but networking, you know, COVID's, COVID's taken a little bit of a chunk out of that, but we're coming back, masks are not for that, mm -hmm. right? But you can never replace human interaction. And I don't care how good technology is, but talking to people, asking for what you want. How about that? How many people just don't ask for what they want? And when you're with people, and that doesn't mean be a constant asker. That doesn't mean every time you walk in the room, oh, God, what does she want now? That's not it. But if you need something, like you said to me, what, what, how can I help you? Ask for what you want. You would be surprised what you will get if you ask. But of course, it all starts with serving. So you have to be willing to network. You have to be able to serve others with no expectation of anything in return. But when the time comes that you do want something, ask for it. Yeah. You may yeah. not get it, but you're not going to get it if you don't ask for it either. But talk <laughs> to people, go out with people, you know, what, how, whatever your level of comfort is today. But people need that human connection and more jobs. Hello, this 80 to 85 percent of jobs are still gotten through mm -hmm. networking, just like you talked about the Alzheimer's. Who knows yeah. you and who says, oh, I think you'd be a good fit. People think all the jobs are on LinkedIn. They're all on Indeed. Newsflash, folks, <laughs> they are not. It's 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 a smokescreen. They are not all on there. Right. And for everybody that you talk to that got that job on LinkedIn, there are 10 other people that they're going to talk to. Okay, let's say nine other people that they're going to talk to that got it through networking. So got to talk to people. Get out there yeah. and talk. Yeah. And, and listeners, it, it, what I want from you is to make sure you connect with Kathy because yeah, she is a door opener for sure. Um, but there's, I'm sure there's ways that you can help her as well. And, um, you know, on top of networking, it, it isn't just something, you know, um, a point to add, I guess, it, it isn't just something you do when you're looking for a job. In oh, fact, no. it makes looking for a job in the future so much easier when you're networking all the time. Um, and, and we get busy. I, I've gotten busy, you know, with, with my new job and working with the Alzheimer's Association. I haven't been networking nearly as much. Um, you know, the podcast itself took a little hiatus for a little while. So I want to make sure that people, you know, connect with Kathy and start building those networks, whether you're looking for a job or not, or you never think you're going to look for a job. Um, it's just an awesome way to, you know, create even more business for your current job, right? So. And how about this, folks, if you're afraid of the networking conversation, change networking to conversation. Yeah. Just say talking to people. That's all it really is, is just having conversations. You don't have to be passing out business cards. You don't have to feel that pressure. Just get to know people. That's all it is. Right. And the more that you do that, the better off. And if I might put in a plug, um, because... Well, I, and I belong to networking groups. Not only do I belong to your group, but there's two groups that I'm involved with right now that have been a huge support for, um, for my business, helping my business grow and helping me grow. One of them is the, um, the organization Grow, Grow Buffalo. Yeah. Um, very loving the organization, all business owners. Um, so I need a support network, just like everybody that we're talking about. And also Western New York Entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, Dave Schaub, I mean, just yeah. damn, that guy, right? And everybody mm -hmm. in the group, high powered people that can raise you up, right? So find your tribe, find your group that rises you up and that makes you want to be a better person. And the Western New York entrepreneur, I don't think I've ever taken my, maybe I've taken my uh, <laughs> business cards once, but it's all very much based on relationship building. Yeah. And once you realize that, everything else falls into place. Yeah, both both are great groups. Mike Anderson was on the show before, yeah. um, you know, and, and it's not just for Western New York. There's so many people they're connected to outside of our area. Um, so yeah, it's it's a great local networking group, but like, like we've been talking about, it's a big web, right? So you don't know who you're connected to. And if you build your personal brand and you showcase who you are and you network, you're gonna, you know, be even more successful at all the things that you do. Just put yourself out there, folks. That's what it's all about, regardless of what your goals are. Just go yeah. for it. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank You're you. a terrific person. I oh. can't wait for the episode to drop. Um, and like I said, all of Kathy's links will be in our show notes. And um, make sure you connect with Kathy.
Thank you, Nick. I appreciate it. What a great conversation. And thank you for all the work you do. So thank you so much. Thank you for joining us in another episode of That Sounds Terrific. Don't forget to check out the show notes and our website at thatsoundsterrific.com to find the contact information and the best ways to volunteer with the organizations that we feature. If you know someone that is doing terrific things and think they should be featured in a future episode, be sure to email us their name, contact info, and short description of what they're doing at thatsoundsterrific at gmail.com. If you like our show, give us a five-star rating and give us some social media love by liking our Facebook page, That Sounds Terrific. Follow us on Twitter at Sounds Terrific 2 and Instagram at Sounds Terrific. We love hearing your feedback on how to make our show sound even more terrific. Till next time.